Hi, this is Cynthia, and this is The Art of Not Selling. As the founder of The Brave Zone, what I do regularly is help self-employed professionals market themselves. And many of you go into your own business without adequate uh, experience in sales and marketing, or you have a, a lot of assumptions about what um, selling is, and you can't see yourself doing it, and that's where your business uh, remains stagnant. So in this presentation, I'd like to perhaps reframe what selling really is and help you be more comfortable when you're trying to grow your business. And to be precise, the title of my presentation is The Art of Not Selling in Such a Pushy Way That You End Up Annoying Prospects and Losing Friends. And I think that's what we all do not want um, to create in our business. So let's get on with it. Um, the reason I'm recording this, I've got a lot of great feedback from the presentation I did in the last uh, BWI big event. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people weren't there. Some people asked for it and I decided let's just record it. So make it easy for everyone. Uh, a little bit about myself before I started my own business as a business consultant, business coach, and then later on building my own business coaching firm in Indonesia and another licensing firm there as well. Uh, I had a large experience in business development. So I was lucky, you know, I, I grew up in the sales world. I grew up in the marketing world and my job was always to get clients and um, in it that that comes with uh, a different kind of skills, a different type of uh, getting used to rejection and everything. So all that is, is already in my blood. Okay. So when I became a when I left corporate after a number of years, maybe about 11 years, and I grew my own business coaching uh, company and I became a business coach selling my own business skills and skills in psychology, um, I found myself at the forefront of selling. Um, instead of just becoming a coach, I was actually the marketing department of my firm and I recruited coaches to deliver the coaching services and did some delivery on my own. But my job was basically managing partner and marketer of my team. Okay, and this is my team, Action Coach Jakarta. If you go see it now, you'll still see uh, three and four coach, three partners and uh, one other coach that's serving our clients. And thankfully, we've got a great, strong reputation um, and, um, and a great uh, partnership. And if we look at how we have arranged, how we sell, how we sell and how we attract our ideal clients, it is by understanding that every coach is different. Even though we are part of a franchise, some of you might've heard of Action Coach, every individual in my team knows who they are, what is their magnetic force and what kinds of clients they want to attract. So we're not just a label. We're not just a title. That's not who we are. We're not just business coaches, or perhaps for you, you're therapists, or you are um, healers, or you are, um, you know, life coaches. You're not just your title. You need to discover who you are. And by discovering that, then you can discover what kinds of clients actually resonate with you. What kinds of clients do you really want? And because you're clear on all that, selling becomes more purposeful and fulfilling and relatively easier rather than someone who is trying to um, just sell a product or service or a what uh, without really understanding who they are. Okay, so we're going to go through that in this presentation. I want to start with life in the fear zone. And you can tell my, my company is called the brave zone for a reason. The reason I call my company the brave zone is that I see that over the last 25 years I've been in business, a lot of people make business decisions from their place of fear. I call this the fear zone. And if you understand a little bit about human psychology, basically all types of fears fall into two major categories. One is the fear of not being liked. The other is the fear of not being good enough. And we call that the imposter syndrome, people pleasing, whatever we call it. It's basically these two fears. And you can imagine if you are selling a product outside of yourself, let's say you're selling a gadget or you're selling a, a car or something like that, you can say, hey, this product is fantastic because it's not you. You can see the product specs and everything. You can fall in love with something external. But when it's time to, uh, you know, falling in love with yourself as a product, lots of monkey mind get in the way. Oh, are you sure you're good enough? Oh, you're just saying that because, oh, you, you know, all these things. So that's why when you're trying to market yourself and it, people who are trying to market their own skills and expertise, they fall for me in a totally different category than just business people. 
you need to master the psychology of selling yourself. And you also need to understand business strategy. Now, many of you have never started a business before, and this is your first time. So it is not easy. I get it. So that's why we're talking about it. First of all, let's talk about stepping out of your fear zone. Now, if you are living in the fear zone with these two types of fears, how it manifests in your marketing is typically one, desperation, okay? Fear of not getting clients makes you desperate, makes you pushy, makes you discount the heck out of everything. Fear of not being significant makes you have fake confidence and, um, you know, try to pretend like you're somebody you're not just to get noticed, being loud all over social media, not because that's wrong. I mean, being loud in the right way is fine, but you know, being, being annoying, being show off, being uh, your marketing is too much about yourself. I'm, I'm sure you've, you've seen accounts like that and people like that, or you just basically give up and not try. And that's the fear of failure, the fear of rejection. So I invite you to step out of that fear zone, whatever you assume about what selling and marketing, how scary it is, how, what it is in the brave zone. To me, selling is helping someone find a solution to their challenges. Now I've been selling for the last 25 years. I, I'm proud to call myself a salesman because I help people find solutions. I help people think differently. I find people, I, I find people creative ways to solve their challenges. And I've loved doing that. I, I sold pest control. I sold chemicals. I sold uh, soap. I sold, um, you know, coaching services, training services. Uh, and I am now in the process of um, creating a, a antique furniture business, a completely different business. Yes, I know it's selling product, but it's actually selling a service of finding antiques for people who want their homes to look nicer. You know, so I'm helping people to solve a specific need. And that to me is what selling is, is to help people understand what they really need and then go and get it for them, okay? With your abilities and your network. And it is about being brave enough to put yourself out there to actualize your purpose, whatever that is. Well, it's first finding your purpose. Then it's brave enough to listen, not just talk. Talking is easy, listening sometimes is hard. And it's also brave enough to ask for that win-win uh, price or deal for your time and effort. And some of us, I know, overly discount ourselves and that's, that's not operating from the brave zone. So I want to talk a little bit now, we talked about the psychology, let's talk about business. Business by definition is an exchange of value for money. So, when you want to sell your time, your services, and you want, when you want to start attracting people that resonate with you, well, first you need to understand what is your value? What is the value that you are giving them? You're asking for their money, but what is the value you're giving them? Money is a concrete thing, a hundred pounds. That's pretty concrete, you know, tangible. People can feel it. People know what it is, how much it is. How concrete is your value? What is your value proposition? And many of us waffle about trying to explain it in, in paragraphs. And if you can't explain your value proposition in one to two sentences, then it's vague. Okay, so it's understanding how to be more concrete in your value. That's also very important. Selling is giving something in exchange for money, is giving value in exchange for money. So Business is an exchange of value and money. Selling is the actual act of giving that value. So selling is giving. Selling is giving value for the exchange of money. So for instance, if you're a financial advisor, you give good financial advice, you sell financial advice, but actually what you're giving is a chance for someone to retire with peace of mind. Let's say you sell websites design. What you're actually doing is you're giving a person online presence without the technical headache. Let's say you're selling homes, real estate, or your home stager, or whatever. By selling this home, by selling your home staging service, you are giving a homeowner uh, cash that they need to move on, but you're also giving the buyer a home and a better quality of life for the family. So selling is giving 
taken from my own business. I do business consultancy. I help self-employed professionals market themselves, find their uniqueness, uh, create better, have sharper business acumen. By selling my program called Brave Marketing, I've given people, what do I give? Confidence, focus, opportunities, more clients, more profits, more time rather than faffing around trying to figure it out themselves and more fulfillment and happiness doing what they do, knowing why they do what they do. Here's my question to you. I want you to use the word selling. A lot of people avoid, oh, I don't sell. I, I add value or I market. Oh, come on, you sell. By selling what? Fill in that first space with your services. So let's say you're a hypnotherapist. By selling hypnotherapy sessions, what do you give and to whom? I have given blank value to blank target market. So let's say by selling uh, hypnotherapy sessions, I have given a way to handle stress to overworked business professionals. I'm making it up, but I know some of you do that. I know people who do that. So that's where I, I get it from. By selling leadership coaching, because I know some of you are leadership coaches, I have given, you know, more confidence to young leaders to go to their next level. Take some time to fill this out for yourself. By selling what you have given what to whom. And please feel free to pause the video and come back to me and we'll continue to the next session. As I've mentioned before, business is an exchange of value for money. What determines that something is valuable? Something is valuable when it removes pain from someone. So a stressful business leader, what they will value perhaps is the removal of stress or a way to handle stress because sometimes you can't remove the stress that's present, that's always coming every day, but a way to handle the stress and have it not affect other parts of their lives, pain. So if it's easier for you, your value is your ability to remove a certain pain. And that's what people want. People don't want pain. They want something more. Now let's talk about, is your service value for money? So we talk about perceived value. If value, let's say the, remove, the, the way to handle stress, okay? If that person that you're talking to, your prospective client, sees it as a, a big pain, something that he or she has a sense of urgency to remove, then let's say you charge a thousand pounds for it or 500 pounds, whatever, that money if it is bigger than the perceived value of the pain and the perceived value of the solution, then your goods or services is called great value for money. If for some reason your prospect is not really serious about removing the, the stress or the way you've communicated your value doesn't make your value big or important because you don't know how to communicate your value, even if you charge the same 500 pounds, your 500 pounds will look expensive compared to the value that you offer. So that's called not worth it. If you remember, if you see the symbols for the money, it is still six pieces of coin or whatever your value is. I've not reduced it. So 500 pounds to 500 pounds. The difference is the perceived value. If you are able to communicate your value in a way that people say, ooh, that is something I need and that's something I want and that's something that's important to me, the fees, whether it's 10 pounds or 500 pounds or 5,000 pounds will be perceived as great value for money. But if you are not able to communicate your value, people will think whatever thing you charge is not worth it. That's very important. That's when people deem, is it expensive or is it cheap? Is it value or is it not value? So let's talk about the five challenges people have in articulating value. Some people are not able to create 
or articulate the value to the point where other people want it. Because one, you're not very specific who you want to talk to. Your niche market is too wide or too vague. Let's say you're a life coach and say, my niche market is business leaders. Well, there's a ton of business leaders with different kinds of profiles, different kinds of needs. So you're talking to everybody. That means you're talking to nobody and you're not specific enough in your messaging. Your marketing is too much about you. Again, it's too much about the bio page, you know? Um, and if you don't like uh, talking about yourself, this is a great, great time not to talk about yourself. It's about your, it's about your clients anyway. It's not about you. So don't worry about it. True salespeople don't really like to talk about themselves. They like to talk about what the clients need. You're not clear on the value you give. You know, and some of you, you have such a vast life and business experience. You can technically solve every problem in the universe. And therein lies the problem. You're not very specific and you're not clear how to say that, how to position yourself, doing what, solving what. You don't clearly explain how you solve it. So people say, oh yeah, I just remove, help you manage stress. But people say, well, okay, well, 15 different hypnotherapists in the past have, have told me the same. So what's different about you? And you go, blah, 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 blah. You don't know how to explain it, or you get overly technical and people get confused. You don't know your marketing style. You try to be someone else. You try to copy someone you see online or something, but it's not you. So what's the solution? The solution is know your design. Know who you are, why you are you, why you are frustrated looking at certain problems. What's your genius? Okay, and everybody's different just because you are providing similar services. It doesn't mean you will attract the same types of people. I find that there is really no competition in the service market because ultimately what your clients buy is a person. It's you. It's a relationship. It's a chemistry. But you need to know how you resonate. What's your magnetic force? Then decide once you've got who you are then what is the client that ideally will suit you determine the value that you offer and learn how to communicate it. And sometimes it is by creating a signature solution or some kind of framework. I'll talk about that later. And then discover your best marketing style that will make marketing more fun and easy for you. Now let's talk about signature solution. What is that? And I'm only talking to people who are proven. When you are proven in what you do, sometimes it is time for you to build a framework. After selling services for over 15 years, I realized that when um, a service includes a framework, like seven habits, or in Action Coach, we have our own framework, five ways, six steps, and all these kinds of things, it is easier to sell than saying, I'm a business coach, and I will blah, 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 and kind of like hoping people will understand what that means. It is easier to sell. And that's why for Brave Marketing, I've also seen that when I give people a structure. Here's one clear path from getting confused in how you market yourself and position yourself to confidence. And it has nine steps and the nine steps is divided into three parts. And I explain to them, people say, I love how it's so structured. And that's why that's where the yes is, the conversion rates come. It gives you more credibility, higher conversion. And also by going through the thinking process of building your framework, it actually gives you clarity in how you speak about yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this is all about finding your magnetic force, okay? And, and once you found that, it is much easier for you to attract your ideal clients instead of chasing after them. So whether you are a host trying to get people into a meetup, whether you are a, um, uh, a, a service provider trying to get more clients into your business, whatever you are, it is about finding your authentic genius, finding your authentic purpose, and then creating a value proposition that makes people turn their heads and say, hey, I kind of want and need that. And then, um, and, you know, focusing on the right activities, marketing activities that feature you at your best. Stop trying to copy other people. If you need more information about this, obviously, I'm always open for a chat especially if you're part of the BWI community. I'm always there to help. Uh, you can contact me here or go to my website and find out more. Thank you very much.